So in this video, we're going to run through this algorithm. Uh, we're going to use b is equal to 4, and then we're going to answer a question on complexity for part b. OK, so I'm going to need a trace table. So um, I know with the number of steps that this is going to take, I'm actually going to do this uh, going horizontally, OK, uh, because I might have a little bit more space to do that in. So, I need, um, in this case, row headers of A, B, C, D, um, and I'm going to need a print as well. Okay, so let's set that up. Okay, so first of all, let A be equal to zero. Then input B, B is 4. C is the integer part of B divided by 3. So we've got 4 divided by 3, which is going to be 1.3 recurring. But you ignore the 0.3 recurring, you just have the 1. Okay, so that's the integer part. So that means that C is 1. D is B plus 2C. So 4 plus 2 lots of 1, so that'd be 6. A is now D take away A. So D take away A, so that'd be 6. Uh, B is B take away 1, so we go down to 3. If B is greater than 0, go to step 3. Well, B is 3, which is clearly greater than 0, so I need to go to step 3 now. C is the integer part of B divided by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is just 1. So that's just 1. D is B plus 2 lots of C, so that's 5. A is D take away A, so 5 take away 6, so minus 1. B is B minus 1, so that goes down to 2. If B is greater than 0, go to step 3. Well, it is. So I need to go to the integer part of B over 3. So 2 thirds integer part of that is just going to be 0. OK, because it's 0 0.6 recurring. So it's just 0 there. So C is 0. D is B plus 2 lots of C. So that would just be 2. A is D take away A. So D, 2, take away A. So that gets us to 3. OK. Uh, B is B take away 1, so that reduces it down to 1. If B is greater than 0, what well, it still is, so I need to keep going. Hopefully I'm going to have enough space. Right, then I go back up to here to step 3, so integer part of 1 over 3, so integer part of 0.3 occurring is just 0, so uh, that's C. D is equal to B plus 2C. So 1 plus 2 lots of 0, so 1. A is equal to D take away A. So uh, 1 take away 3 would be minus 2. OK. And then B is B take away 1. So that is now going to be 0. And if B is greater than 0, go to step 3. Well, now it is actually 0, so we go on to the next line. Print the absolute value of A. So the absolute value of A, what that means is it's just going to take whatever A is and make sure that the output is positive, OK, or greater than or equal to 0, rather. So the absolute value of minus 2 is just 2. It's the modulus of 2, uh, modulus of minus 2, OK? So that's our printing, OK? And then we stop. OK, so if a computer takes three seconds to run when B is 4, so if it took all of that algorithm and it took three seconds to run it, how long would it approximately take if B is equal to 16? Now, what you need to consider here is what is the algorithmic complexity of this algorithm. OK, now each time we went through 
the algorithm, okay, you can kind of see it in loops here, um, we went through the same four stages. We found a value for A, found a value for B, found a value for C, found a value for D. Then A, then B, then C, then D. Then A, then B, then C, then D. Okay? So, essentially, B was counting down and was a counter for us. Okay? So each time we went through B, it reduced by one. Okay? So it was a counter. So, if we've got B is equal to 16, then this should take four times as long, okay? The uh, factor here is four. So your order of complexity in this case will just be order of n. Now that doesn't mean that it's just one each time, but the fact of that um, each time you do the process it takes a certain amount of time, and if I scale it up, if I do 16 of these, rather than just 4, uh, with b as 4, and I do b as 16, then um, I, it's just going to take 4 times as long. Okay? So, it's 4 to the power of 1, because we've got order of n to the 1. And it took 3 seconds. So it should just take 12 seconds. Okay? So this was really spotting that B here was being a counter for us. And so that made sure that we were talking about linear complexity.